Hello everyone, it's Ryan Finn for MTG and today we're going to be discussing all the infinite combos in Battle Pod, so stay tuned for that. Now I know that I for one am really looking forward to Battle Bond, and not just because of the infinite combos, but there are some sweet cards in there in general. Now without further ado, let's get into the combos. So the first combo we're going to talk about is Najila the Blade Blossom. Now for those of you who don't know, Najila the Blade Blossom costs 3 mana, 2 and a red. She's a legendary creature, human warrior, and she says, Whenever a warrior attacks, you may have its controller create a 1-1 one, one white warrior creature token that's tapped and attacking. Now, before we continue with the card, I want to point out that if a warrior token attacks, you get another warrior token. I think this is quite powerful. Now, her second ability is the part that goes infinite. We can play Wooberg, or white, blue, black, red, green, to untap all attacking creatures. They gain Trample, Lifelink, and Haste instead of turn. And after this phase, there is an additional combat phase. We can activate this ability only during combat. Now, the Gila goes infinite with a lot of cards similar to Hellkite Charger. The first is Bear Umbra. Bear Umbra costs two green green. It's an enchantment aura, and it says enchant creature. Enchanted creature gets plus two, plus two, and whenever this creature attacks, untap all lands you control. The way the combo works is we have Najila, we attack with her. This triggers Bear Umbra and untaps all our lands. We can then pay the Wooberg to untap all of our attacking creatures and then we get the additional combat phase. So then we attack again in the additional combat phase and this untaps our lands. The other thing, Totem Armor, says that if the enchanted creature would be destroyed, instead destroy Totem Armor, destroy the Totem Armor and pretend, pre prevent the creature from dying. So Bear Umbra is a very powerful card. It goes infinite with Najila the Blade Blossom, but it also goes infinite with Hellkite Charger. But that's not the only card Najila goes infinite with. She also goes infinite with Sword of Feast and Famine. Sword of Feast and Famine is an artifact equipment with converted mana cost to free generic mana, and it says equipped creature gets plus two plus two and has protection from black and from green. Whenever a equipped creature does combat damage to a player, that player discards a card, and you untap all lands you control. It's got an equip cost of two. So, we swing with Najila. For this one's work, she has to deal combat damage every time. We swing with Najila. We hit our opponent. Sword of Feast and Famine untaps our lands. We then play Wooberg, untap all of our creatures, and we swing again. So it's very similar to the Bear Umbra, except this time we actually have to deal combat damage. So that's a thing to remember. It's quite a key point. Now, the second combo we have is moving a different card. It's also a mythic from Battle, Battle Bond, and that is Bramble Sovereign. Bramble Sovereign costs two and two green. It's a creature draw out, and it says, whenever another non-token creature enters the battlefield, you may pay a white green, one green, sorry. If you do, that creature's controller creates a token that's a copy of that creature. This is quite a powerful card. It could be used for group hug, but it could be used for combos as well. So. It's part of a lot of different combos. The first one we're talking about is a four card combo, so not very consistent, especially not in Commander. Now the other three cards, the first one is Wisp Weaver Angel, which costs six mana, four white white. It has flying, and when it enters the battlefield, we may exile another target creature we control, and then return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control. So Wisp Weaver Angel will enter. We'll play white one, sorry, one green, create a token that's a copy of Wisp Weaver Angel. The token will flicker the original Wisp Weaver Angel. We pay the white green again. One green, sorry. However, to be able to pay one green without untapping our lands, we'll need Intruder Alarm. Intruder Alarm costs two and a blue. It says creatures do not untap during their controller's untap phases, but whenever any creature comes into play, untap all creatures. This is quite a powerful effect. It's in a lot of infinite combos, but the way it works here is we'll have any Mana Dork, for example, Elvish Aberration, Tap for free green mana, and then this will pay the Bramble Sovereign's effect. When the token enters, it will untap the Elvish Aberration, so we can pay again for the next ETB trigger. So this combo will give us infinite Wisp Weaver Angels, and if you're using Elvish Aberration, infinite green mana as well, so it's quite a good combo. However, the only problem is that those tokens don't have haste, so you'll have to wait until next turn to attack and win the game, which is quite unreliable in Commander seeing as board are very common. Now the next Bramble Sovereign combo isn't a four card combo, it's a two card combo. Bramble Sovereign, which you know what it does, and Palinchron. Now, 
Palancron costs 7 mana, 5 and 2 blue. It has flying, and when it comes into play, untap up to 7 lands. We can pay 4 to bounce it to our hand. Now, Palancron comes in for 7 mana. We pay 2 to create a token that's a copy of it, and we can untap 14 lands. So this will net us 5 mana. We'll use 4 of it to bounce it to hand. So every time we repeat this combo, we'll end up netting 1 mana, as well as creating infinite Palancron com tokens. Again, these tokens don't have haste, so we have to wait until next turn, but the infinite mana, you can use that to win the game anyway. Now the next combo, combo number three, actually involves a reprint. However, the card is in Battle Bond, so I thought I'd count it. Now that combo, it's not an infinite combo, but well, it kind of is. It's Microsynth Lattice, which costs six generic mana. It's an artifact, and it says... All permanents, including lands, that's important to note, are artifacts in addition to their other types. All cards for art on the battlefield, spells and permanents are colourless, and players may spend mana as though it were mana of any colour. Now this is an important card in the combo. Uh, the next card is Dark Steel Forge, which costs 9 generic mana, and it says artifacts you control have indestructible, and that includes itself, the Dark Steel Forge. And the third card is Nevenural's Disc, which costs 4 generic mana, it's an artifact, it enters the battlefield tapped, and we can pay 1 and tap it to destroy all artifact creatures and enchantments. Now, something I never noticed about Nevenural's Disc is we don't have to sacrifice it as part of the cost. Normally it'll just destroy itself, however, if Nevenural's Disc has indestructible, it won't destroy itself. So what this will do, this 3 card combo, not an infinite combo, but a nice interaction, is every single turn we can pay one and tap the disc to destroy all permanents our opponents control, including lands. And this will create a pretty hard lock on the board where your opponents can't do anything, and it will very often lead to all your opponents conceding because of how powerful it is. The next combo we have, combo number four, involves the new card Stadium Vendors. Stadium Vendors costs three and a red, and it says when Stadium Vendors enters the battlefield, Choose a player. That player adds two mana of any one colour they choose. In this case, we choose blue. But the second card we combo with is Dead Eye Navigator, which costs four and two blue. It has Soul Bond. When this creature enters the battlefield, we can pair it with another creature. They remain Soul Bonded for as long as both are on the battlefield. Then we can also pair if another creature enters, we can pair them together. And then Dead Eye Navigator says, as long as Dead Eye Navigator is paired with another creature, each of those creatures has pay 2, 1 and a blue, exile this creature, then return it to the battlefield under your control. The way this works, we have the Dine Navigator on the field, Stadium Vendors comes in, we choose ourselves, and we add 2 blue to our mana pool. We use this blue, 2 blue to flicker Stadium Vendors, then it enters the battlefield, we get 2 blue mana, we flicker it, and then we can flicker it infinite times. Now these two cards together don't win you the game because they don't have a game ending combo there. We'd need another card, for example Altar of the Brood, which says whenever another permanent enters under your control, each opponent puts the top card of the library into their graveyard. So every time Stadium Vendors entered, the opponents would mill for one. Or Impact Tremors, which says whenever a creature enters under your control, Impact Tremors deals one damage to each opponent. So by infinitely flickering the stadium vendors, we can deal infinite damage to each opponent. The next combo we have is kind of an infinite combo. It's kind of confusing, but I'll try and explain it the best I can. So the first card, first card we have is Okaun Eye of Chaos. Okaun Eye of Chaos, because four and a red, which is five in total. It's a legendary creature. And it partners with Zunda Split, Eye of Wisdom. Now for those of you who don't know, Partner was a mechanic introduced in Commander 2016, which meant you could have any two cards be your commanders as long as they both had Partner. Now, in Battle Bond, they've introduced a new mechanic called Partner with X. So X is the name of the spell it partners with. So what that means is when one enters the battlefield, target player can search their library for the other one. So when Okaun enters, Someone can tutor for Zundersplut and put it into their hand. In Commander, this means you can have both of them as your partner, as commanders because they have partner, but only with each other. So you can't have a Zundersplut and any of the other partners. It has to be Zundersplut and Okaun. Anyway, so the rest of what Okaun says is at the beginning of combat on your turn, 
flip a coin until you lose a flip. Whenever you win a flip, whenever a player wins a flip, double overcomes power and toughness until end of turn. You've got base power and toughness 3-3. Free free. So the way this works, we move to combat. I'll flip a coin. If I win the flip, he becomes 6-6. Six, six. If I win it again, he becomes 12-12. Twelve, twelve. Now his partner, I'll just read what they do now, is Zundersplut, Eye of Wisdom, which costs 4 in a blue, and it partners with Ocalm. At the beginning of combat on your turn, flip a coin until you lose a flip. Whenever a player wins a coin flip, draw a card. Now, yes, these two things do trigger separately, so if they're both on the field, you'd flip until you lose a flip twice. Now the card that these guys go infinite with is Frenetic Efreet. Frenetic Efreet costs 1, a blue and a red, it has flying, and you can pay 0 to flip a coin. Target opponent calls heads or tails while the coin is in the air. If the flip ends up in your favour, Frenetic Efreet phases out, otherwise bury Frenetic Efreet. Now, Frenetic Efreet itself puts infinite triggers on the stack. I pay 0 to activate his ability, I pay 0 to activate his ability, and you can do this infinite times. However, you can't guarantee that you could have you lose all the flips, so it's quite confusing how you'd work this out. I've got an Ocalm on the battlefield, and I flip coins infinite times with Frenetic Efreet. Do we just assume that my Ocalm gets infinite power and toughness, or do I actually have to flip 10 million times to see? I'm waiting to see what judges say about that, because it could lead to a lot of confusion, because you can't guarantee it'll be a 50-50 uh, coin flip. It's random, and it could be you lose all of them, so that's quite interesting. So with Ocalm and Zvenetic Efreet, we create an infinitely large Ocalm, and with Zundersplut, we can draw our entire deck, in theory. So if we have a Laboratory Maniac on the battlefield, Laboratory Maniac costs 3, 2 and a blue, Creature, Human, Wizard, and if you draw a card, Blue Library has no cards in it, you win the game. So with Zundersplut, we draw our entire library and win the game instead of losing the game. The next combo we have is another reprint, and this reprint is Doubling Season. Now, if you don't know about Doubling Season, it goes infinite, or combos at least, with a lot of other cards. It costs 4 and a green, it's an enchantment, and it says if an effect would create one or more tokens under your control, it creates twice that many tokens instead. And if an effect would put one or more counters on a permanent you control, it puts twice those many counters on that permanent instead. Now just one of the cards that Doubling Season goes infinite with is Jace Cunning Castaway. Jace Cunning Castaway costs 1 blue blue, it's a legendary plane talker Jace. Not quite as powerful as the Mind Sculptor, but it goes infinite in this combo. We can plus one him, and it says, whenever one or more creatures you control deal combat damage to a player this turn, draw a card, then discard a card. His minus two says, create a 2-2 two, two blue illusion creature token with, whenever this creature becomes the target of a spell, sacrifice it. And his minus five says, create two tokens that are copies of Jace, except they're not legendary. He enters with free loyalty. However, if you have a doubling season on the field, he enters with six loyalty, which means we can immediately minus five him to create two, except doubling season, four Jaces that will all enter with six loyalty. We can minus five all four of them to create 16 Jaces, and we can do this to create infinite Jaces, and then we don't minus five them, we minus two of them instead to create two two blue illusion creature tokens with whenever this creature becomes a target of the spell, sacrifice it, and we can create infinite 2-2 two, two blue illusion creature tokens with when this creature comes to target a spell, sacrifice it. So, again, like I've said earlier, these tokens do not have haste, so you would have to wait another turn cycle before you get to swing for the win. However, I still think it's an interesting combination. It just shows how powerful doubling season is. The next combo we have is another reprint. Um, I have actually made a deck deck around this combo, so if you want to find it, I'll leave a link in the description. It's a pauper legal one as well, so it's a pauper deck deck. So this card is Midnight Guard. Midnight Guard costs two and a white, and it says, whenever another creature enters the battlefield, untap Midnight Guard. It's a two three. Presence of Grund costs two and a green, and it says, enchant creature. Enchanted creature has tap. Create a one one green elf warrior creature token. So. We enchant Midnight Guard with Presence of Gond, tap Midnight Guard, create a 1-1 green elf, this untaps Midnight Guard, we repeat this infinite times, 
You've heard me talk about it before. You know how much I love this combo. It's an amazing combo in my opinion. The next combo we have is another reprint. I'm sorry, there's a lot of reprints in Battle Bomb that are part of Infinite Combos, and I thought maybe you haven't heard of them all, so you want to see them. So this one is Sparring Mummy. Sparring Mummy costs three and a white, and it says when Sparring Mummy enters the battlefield, untap target creature. It's a free free. Kiki Jiki Mirror Breaker is the card it's infinite with. Costs two red red red. It's a legendary creature, Goblin Shaman, with haste, and it says tap. Create a token that's a copy of target non-legendary creature you control. That token has haste. Sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step. So the way this works. We tap Kiki, creates a token that's a copy of Spying Mummy. The token enters and untaps Kiki Jiki. Tap Kiki Jiki, creates a token that's a copy of Spying Mummy, and we create infinite free freeze with haste and swing for infinite. This is an amazing combo because, as I keep saying before, when the tokens don't have haste, you can't win that turn and your opponents have to be board wipe. With this one, the tokens have a haste and you just win the game. Plus, Kiki has haste, so you can win the turn he comes down. It's an amazingly powerful combo. The next combo we have is another reprint, sorry. Uh, it's Peregrine Drake, which costs four and a blue. It's a creature Drake, it has flying, and whenever Peregrine Drake enters the battlefield, untap up to five lands to two free. It's kind of like a zero cost creature, that's how it works, but we're taking advantage of it. The Dine Navigator costs four, a blue, and a blue. It has Soul Bond, which you know what it does, and as long as it's paired with a creature, we can pay two to flicker a creature. So. Daylight Navigator, Peregrine Drake enters the battlefield, untaps 5 lands, pay 2 to flicker it, untap. We can net free mana every time and create infinite mana, which we can do to cast any X spell. Now, the next infinite combo we have is another reprint, I'm sorry, and this is the last infinite combo that I have found so far in Battle Bond. If you've seen any more, please comment them down below. This combo is Savage Ventmore, which costs 4 red green. It's a creature dragon, it has flying, and whenever Savage Ventmore attacks, add red, 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 green, green, green. And to the end of turn, you don't lose this mana as steps and phases end. Now, this goes infinite with a card called Aggravated Assault. Aggravated Assault costs 3 mana, 2 and a red. It's an enchantment and it has the ability to pay 3 red, red, untap all creatures you control. After this main phase, there is an additional combat phase, followed by an additional main phase. Activate this ability only any time you could cast a sorcery. So we swing with event more, we get 6 mana. We pay 5 of it to untap all our creatures and then we can swing infinite times. We also generate infinite mana, however I doubt that will be useful because normally just this will win the game by being able to swing infinite times. But if it can't, you'll get infinite mana that you can do something with, hopefully. So that's been it for all the infinite combos in Battle Bond. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you have, please like and subscribe and comment down below. Now the video is not quite over, because there's one thing we need to talk about, and that is the giveaway. So for those of you who don't know, I'm giving away a Rurik Far EDH deck. The deck is here, Rurik Far is here. Details on that, if you've got Facebook or Instagram, go check me out, links in the description, and repost the post where I talk about the combo and the giveaway, and then I will be giving away the deck I'm going to be doing a deck tech that will hopefully be coming out this weekend or next weekend. In that date, I'll be giving away the end date of when the giveaway will end. So all entries will need to be in before then. Good luck to all who have already entered and all who will enter after this. Thank you all for watching. I hope you have a great day. Goodbye.